お前は一体何なんだ友達だ What's up, YouTube? It's Spoot with Fort Misery Gaming. It's your favorite、uh, neighborhood, Spider Man.、Uh, today, we are going to continue our little bit on vision cards.、Um, we did get a little bit of feedback on ways to improve and kind of show you guys more accurate information just because I don't have all the cards maxed. And there were a couple of good pieces and a couple of pieces that were just kind of people whacking themselves, which is fine. But、um, there were some very good pieces of information brought up. So. Uh, we're going to go to Ultima.jp,、uh, which is the website ranking for a lot of gotchas,、uh, but specifically we're going to be using the War of the Visions one. So the、uh, first cards we're going to be looking at、uh, today is all MRs. So we did our section on URs. We are now moving on to the world famous middle class ones, which there aren't that many of them in the game, but there are some very, very powerful ones that you should be aware of. Uh, the first one, obviously, is Vow of Love. This is your tank card extraordinaire. You can get slash attack up to a maximum of 20. Hate will always stay at 5. We've talked about hate a couple of times. Hate is essentially just your provoke, it's your threat. It's well, how much does the other enemy want to hit this person more than the other? The party ability is a percentage of attack、uh, goes up to 30, which is actually very strong. So if you throw this on your、uh, Mont, you throw this on your、uh, Engelbert, you throw this on your Sid, or really anybody that you kind of want to position into can this person take a hit and are they capable of either tanking it or evading it? So、uh, later on, once you guys start stacking evasion, this becomes significantly more important to kind of move. Um, also, a secret for you in PvP, this card kind of breaks how a lot of units interact with each other.、Um, so, you'll get a lot of magic users that'll use multi attacks on one guy. So, like, Medina will prioritize hitting that one person with Vow of Love more often than others. So,、uh, occasionally, you can get her to blow her entire limit break on you, which is、uh, real good. Uh, the stats on it are. Um, the HP on this is very good.、Um, to start off, like, you'll see that the stats aren't particularly good on the secondary and tertiary.、Um, the initial values for HP, attack, and mag are 43, 12, and 17. Obviously, you can see even 14 levels in, you're not getting that much attack.、Uh, maximum values are 346, 480, or excuse me, that's no, you do not get a 480 attack, 48 attack, and 69 power. So, overall, it's an okay use. It's not a crazy large amount.、Um, the HP on it is fantastic. And since you are taking the hate, it does go decent on a tank. And especially considering that both tanks use swords right now, the slash attack is not to be sneezed at. This is a card that you 100% want to invest in. It is too good to ignore. Let me see where the other one shows up. Secret Orders. This is another very good one. So the initial stats on it are、uh, Agi up 5% and Mind down 5% or Spirit in this one.、Um, quickness Agi goes up to 10%. So if you put this on a fast unit, especially if you're running the Beowulf card on somebody else,、um, you go. Stupid fast. It is ridiculous how quick this makes you go.、Um, and then you get slash attack.、Uh, I think it starts at, yeah, it starts at 10 and it's a max of 20. So overall, this is a very usable card, especially if you don't have some of the bigger hitting, like if you don't have echoing screams or if you don't have、um, any of the higher URs that give you the attack bonuses. This is a very, very good card to have. Agility means you go faster. Slash attack just translates into more damage.、Uh, your. Oh, they don't even have the stats up for this one. Alright, that's fine. So the base stats are 29, 26, and 22.、Um, the. Let me see if they have it posted on the other one. And this is the issue you run into is that people don't. Fill these things out on Ultima or on the game, yeah. So you end up sort of like, well, if I don't have the card, what do I do? Well, you hope for the best. 
There you go, secret orders. Let's see if we can find the max on here. They don't have it either. What a pick. At 50, you get 172 HP, 82 attack, and 71 mag. So, with the incremental increases every 10 levels, you're looking at 30 HP a level, uh, 29 to 31 on average. Uh, the attack is going up anywhere from 11 to 12. So it would probably, and then mag goes up pretty much specifically to 10 each time after 30. So at 70, you can imagine this is probably going to give you about 230 HP, probably about 100 attack, and close to 91 mag, give or take. Um, I wish I had a more specific number to give you, but apparently uh, nobody on either one of these sites decided that they wanted to update the card fully. Uh, another summon card, Defiling Curse Marlboro. Um, I do not know specifically if this will ever get a significant amount of use. The strike attack on party is pretty decent, but I don't know if it's enough to really... I just don't know if it's enough to really justify its usage, I guess is what I should say. It's good, but it's not particularly that good. Um, the, the art's cool. Like, we don't normally get blow-ups of Marlboros very often, so, like, I'm a big fan of that. So let's see if we can find the actual stats for this one. Oh, Impure Curse Marlboro on JP, so that's not too terrible. Nobody has even filled out the stats on this one. Let's see if we can find it on Gameco or Gamia. What a wild thing. Cards are so bad, people don't even want to put stuff into them. Nope, don't have it on either one. So this one will be a mystery for the time being. Neither Ultima nor Gamia have bothered to update this one. Um, confusion resistance is something that's very niche. If there's a particular unit that is very good at confusing enemies, this would be very, very good. Um, Gefgarian Sword actually has confusion on hit, which is pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but stat-wise, like it's definitely a split HP mag card, and Strike Attack, while being a good party ability... Those are sort of, com those are, they're kind of commodities, right? Like, you have to be really careful about your party abilities because not all of them are going to be something that you want. Uh, Birth of a New Life, Luck 7%, Max HP 2%. I am relatively sure this one has an ability to check it. Or maybe not. <laughs> what a wild time when you can't even check your own cards. Alright, let's do a little bit of translation here. There we go. Alright. So we're looking for the SSR. It's really awful because there's only like, you know, nine of these in NA right now, which is even worse. There we go. Birth of a new life. That one actually didn't change too much. Let's see if this one has any updates on it. Uh, yeah, this one actually has the maximum value, so that's not too bad. So the max HP goes up to 8%. Um, you're probably not going to favor that on anything but tanks. Um, the luck is max is at 21%. Luck factors into a lot of little things. I don't know if having that on a card is worth running. It's usable, but only barely. Um, so the minimum values, as you can see, are 58, 8, 8. Uh, and the maximum values are 461, 32, and 29. 
These are decent. That's a lot of HP, and it's especially good on a budget tank if you just don't have anything else that you can use it for. It's not the most amazing card running by any stretch of the imagination, but it is serviceable. It is usable in a pinch. Uh, cleansing the Mind. Uh, this one will have some niche use specifically later. Uh, the shoot, the missile resistance is very powerful. <clears throat> So the luck up goes to 15% at, at a max and a 3% minimum. That's fine. That's whatever. Like, your luck going up is fine. The missile attack res goes up to 15. That means specifically you get 15 points of missile attack res, which means you take... I don't know if it translates into a percentage or if it's a secondary calculation, but you take significantly less <coughs> missile attack. So in gunner meta, this card actually has some niche uses. Um, the stats aren't really anything to call home about. A minimum 48, 12, 10. Maximum uh, 384, 48, 43. So a decent amount of HP. Um, really the only big use of it is one, you got your kitties. And two, you got Shadow Links playing with kitties, if you know what I mean. Giggity. Uh, sharpen Concentration. This is actually a really good one uh, for... Reasons that will become evident very quickly. So off the rip, you get plus five accuracy, minus five spirit. And people are going to be like, oh, my magic resistance. What am I going to do? It doesn't matter. So that always stays the same. It's a secondary minus. Those never go up. Your accuracy goes up to 20. That means that you can ignore a specific percentage of evasion stats. Um, so you have a much higher percentage chance to hit a character with a lot of evasion than without. Here's the thing that's kind of tricky with this one. The missile attack goes up to 20. It starts at 10. These are pretty respectable stats. It guarantees that if you are going up against an evasion team, your gunner or your archer is going to be able to hit them. I mean, it's a very good split. The stats on it aren't skyrocket, but they're decent. So, like, at level 1, you're looking at 25, 30, 22. All right, so you can already see the card's going to be kind of split across. Uh, at max level, it's 200, 121, and 91. So no matter who you put this on, even if they have a magic attack, they're going to get a little bit of a benefit from this card. Like I said, it is not the best card in the world, but it will see some use in the evasion meta. Um, and, and people keep talking about that, and that's something that we can talk about at a later date when it starts showing up. But eventually people, like the, the short version is that people are going to start stacking evasion talents on weapons and evasion uh, equipment. So like the Hermes sandals from the match arena, stuff like that. Things that give you passive evasion will always be very, very strong, because if you can't hit a character, obviously you can't kill them. Um, and starting with Orlando, especially, like, one of his abilities gives him a passive evasion stat, which is strong. Um, and this is kind of a card that, if it becomes rampant, you do have an option, an accessible option, nonetheless, to actually combat it with some amount of ability. It's not the best option, but it'll work. Uh, the vision card for Behemoth. This one is okay. It's not the worst card that's ever been printed, but it's not the best card either. The art's really cool, actually, so that's the thing that gets me. So Beast Killer <coughs> gives you a specific, a non-calculated amount of damage against enemies that have the Beast stat. It's pretty good um, if you are fighting a Beast. It's pretty useless against everything else. Your Agi goes up to a maximum of 5%. Your Beast Killer goes up to a maximum of 10 Killer stats, when used against their proper enemy, are very, very powerful. Um, they are not to be underestimated. That's why, like, Cactar and Golem having Man Killer on them or Human Killer on them is very, very strong. Like, these are espers that, if you have them, you should use them, especially in PvP, because it's just percentage-based damage more than giving you 15 attack points. You are dealing damage across the board. Um, the party ability is okay. Uh, it appears to us 5, goes up to 15. So, like, if you have an issue with spear users, I guess this is really good, but I mean, I don't know how many people are still getting dunked on by Eld, so I don't, I don't really know what to tell you. 
Um, the stats on this one are kind of impressive. So uh, 42, 33, 3 are the beginning stats. The max stats are 338, 133, 14. So that's a respectable amount of HP and attack on a card, right? It's a good chunk. Um, it's not the best you're going to see, but it's it's pretty good. It's not too bad. Um, your party ability is not amazing, and the bestowed effects are very niche, but agility is always usable even as a percentage, and killers do killer stats do have their uses. Uh, Metal Daemon, Iron Giante. Uh, this is one of the more usable ones. Uh, it's not... The most powerful card, but it has got a, uh, it's pretty decent. So you've got a slash attack, 5, it goes up to 20, uh, and but your agi goes down 3%. Now that one doesn't change. If it's a minus, that's usually a flat stat. So if it says 3, it stays at 3, regardless of how much you level it up. So going slower kind of sucks, but it's a little better. Like slash attack, the way it is calculated, makes it significantly better than flat attack 90% of the time. Slash attack res is where the party ability gets good. Outside of the gunner meta, most of your damage dealing characters are axe users, are uh, dagger users, are uh, samurai sword users, are sword users. Like they use slashing attacks. So the biggest thing is that goes up to 15 and that is a flat percentage reduction. It is very good against characters that are trying to one shot you, that aren't using abilities or are trying to run up at you. Um, the stats on it are okay. So bare minimum HP attack mag is 48, 20, and 6. That's fine. It starts. It's level 1. Whatever. Uh, maximum values are 384, 80, and 25. Decent HP. Okay attack. Um, the attack could be better, I feel like, for the style of card. But I understand that you can't make every one of these like a banger. Like It's not going to happen. Uh, all right, we are running towards the end of these. So we have Fleeting Tranquility. If I remember correctly, this one is not great, but let me find the art really quickly for you. And I'll get you the main stats. There it is. It's Peace of Mind in JP. So, Charm Res. Uh, it's whatever. It, it's not particularly useful. The max HP on the party bonus is stronger, um, but not the the best or worst. It's, it's, it's fine, I guess is what I should say. Um, the max HP goes up to 15%. The Charm Res goes up to 15 as well. Um, Charm Res is good against characters for like Thieves, for Steelheart, and um, later on you'll have some characters that just have uh, regular Charm abilities. It's You are not really going to run into them too often, so it doesn't really matter, but the stats on this one are okay. Um, so it starts off 31, 28, 18, it maxes out at 253, 165. So 100 attack is pretty decent, 253 HP is okay. The party ability of 15% HP maxed out is actually pretty good. That's a lot of HP for pretty much anybody across the board. I don't know if it justifies using this card over anything else, but it is something to consider if you don't have better options. Uh, also, the art for this one's really good. It's got both of my both of my preferred waifus, and, except there's no Yerma on here. So we're doing okay as far as uh, eye candy goes. Uh, and that is it, because we immediately move on to Cactar, which is an SR. So these are your MR vision cards, the thing to pay attention to specifically. Um, you are probably going to have a couple of options that are just strictly better than these. I don't imagine anybody hasn't pulled the majority of these, at least a couple of you are at this point. Um, there's not a whole lot more to really go over. Um, We've given you the stats for the MRs. The I would say like the real big MVPs here are you've got Vow of Love, very important to have on a tank. You've got Secret Orders, um, which not only boosts your character's speed, but gives your entire party of DPSers a little bit more damage with slash attacks. And you've got uh, Sharpened Concentration, which is very, very important if you start running into... Uh, very heavily dedicated evasion teams. This is one of the only cards that gives you that kind of accuracy in the game. 
So out of all of them, those are the ones I would pick. You've got a couple of other serviceable but not great cards, but this should get you through. So um, that's the run of our MRs. Uh, hopefully this made a little more sense than the last one. Uh, like giving you the max stats obviously is something to keep in mind. Um, and we have a much better degree of like what the actual maximum for the percentages are. So uh, give us a like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what your favorite MR vision card is. Like I said, if I'm just looking at them all, I like Shadow Lynx's kitties. I like cats. Uh, and that's it. So give us a holler. Uh, do your polls. Make sure to get your free polls in for Final Fantasy Tactics because we only got a couple more. I'm still trying to bang out Sid as best I can. And um, don't get miserable, guys. <laughs>